tonight to that verse in Hebrews that we looked at this morning. We thank the Lord for the privilege to be here today. We do not take the open door for granted. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 13, laying at the back door of the Hall of Fame chapter, he said in verse 7, Remember them which have the rule over you have spoken unto you the word of God. The little word remember is not the immediate past, but the distant past. He's looked at the Old Testament saints in the Hall of Fame chapter of 11. And so he's calling on us to look in the past at those who have brought us the word, those whom we stand on their shoulders. Uh, this morning we looked at John Patton. My, certainly, those are some shoulders we could stand on tonight. A man who spent 46 years ministering to cannibals. He asked us to look at a couple of things about them. He said, whose faith follows to find out what kind of faith they had. Seek to mimic it. Considering the end of their conversation, find out how they cross the finish line. Seek to do likewise. And uh, thinking of some people from the past, asking ourselves the question, is there any among us like these? These were definitely offering plate people. It was not that they gave God their tithe or their talent or their time. Oh, no, gracious, that's silly. These people gave God themselves. You ever give God yourself, he's got everything else. He doesn't need you to dish it out to him. Tonight, I want to draw our attention to another one from the past. A man by the name of William Tyndall. If you have the Bible tonight, a passage of scripture that often appears in Tyndall's life. He was born in 1494. He died in 1536. He only lived 42 years. A very short life. When I look at what he accomplished in 42 years and what little I have accomplished in 73 years, I wonder if I even know Tyndall's God. Of course, you know tonight, living a long life is not always good. Uh, old people are not always wise people. Some of the dumbest people I've ever met had gray hair. And young people are not always strong people. Some of you young people here tonight might feel like you could just take on the world, got it by the tail, and you may be the weakest spiritually tonight that you've ever been in all of your life. William Tyndall only lived 42 years, but oh, how he accomplished so many things. A verse that appears in his life quite often in Psalms 119, verse 16, I will delight myself in thy statutes. And this little phrase, I will not forget thy word. As we begin to unpack Tyndall's life tonight, I would draw our attention to his calling King Henry VIII sent out an edict for William to be arrested and killed. And this is what the edict said that he was guilty of. He sings but one note. It seemed like Tyndall's entire life, King Henry VIII said, he always just sings one note. was guilty of. I want to arrest him and kill him. Pray tell, what was that note that William Tyndall sung like a 
broken record hung up on the scratch over and over and over again. What was it? We need an English Bible in our own language. The church of Rome had a market upon them, held them in control with the Latin Bible. William Tyndall knew if they ever read it in their own language, they would realize there was no such thing as the need to go to a priest or to Mary. Clearly the Bible said come boldly before the throne of grace and find help for your needs. They would find out there was no purgatory, there was no place between heaven and hell. It was just heaven and hell. I remember years ago, as an associate pastor over in Columbia, South Carolina, a lady, Miss Voss was her name. She was an Italian lady. Her and her daughter came in on the bus, and, and I went to visit them that week. And I said, Miss Voss, I said, we really enjoyed you being at church Sunday. She said, you know, she said, I don't really know why we came. She said, we just got on the bus. She said, we're strict Roman Catholics. I said, sure enough. I said, has anybody ever taken the Bible and shared anything from the word of God about it? And she said, I don't know that they ever have. I said, do you have a Bible here in the house? She says, the only thing we've got here is the Catholic Bible. I said, oh, the Douay version. And she said, Yes. I got the Bible out, and I asked her to read to me the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And I remember it like it was yesterday when she got to the part that there's a great gulf fixed between me and you. You can't come to me, and I can't come to you. I saw it when the lights come on in her eyes, and she looked at me. She said, the Catholic Church has been lying to me all my life, hasn't it? I said, yes, ma'am, they are. She was gloriously saved that night. That's what William Tyndall felt like. That there was no need for a prayer at a mass. That English Bible would set God's people free. His calling was to sing but one note. His contending, I would mention tonight quickly. William was staying at a boarding house, a bread and breakfast type place. He was sitting at the breakfast table one morning and there happened to be a Catholic priest there. He knew of William and his one note. And he said to William, he says, I would rather have the words of the Pope than an English Bible. William said, it is my desire that one day a poor, uneducated farmer would know more about the Bible than does the Pope of Rome. William's desire was that the farmer could ponder it while he plowed, the student could learn it at his studies, the traveler could sing it on the road and the preacher could stand and tell it. William Tyndall believed that in the middle of that Latin Bible uh, was the power to set the most hardened sinner free from the bondage of sin if he could just see it in his own language. It's contending, singing, but one note. Not only do I see in his life, his calling, his contending, but I see his crescendo. William Tyndall only lived 42 years. Such a short life. I would imagine most of the adults here tonight have taught that 42 years. He spoke and read fluently eight languages, Latin, Greek, German, French, Hebrew, Spanish, 
Italian, and English. 42 years, fluent in eight languages. In 1534, he finished his highest glorious crescendo. He had translated the Bible from Latin into Greek into English, the entire New Testament. England was known for its great cloth trade. Tyndall began to smuggle Bibles into England in bales of cotton. The government got wind of it. They began to confiscate the Bibles. William Tyndall realized that they were paying money to people that gave up those Bibles, told them where they were hiding in those bales of cotton. So Tyndall began to get spies to turn in very small shipments of Bibles. They were given great amounts of money, which they gave back to Tyndall, print more Bibles. William Tyndall was such a picture of being wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. He was playing his one note, his crescendo. Can I mention tonight his credit? The last two years of his life, he translated Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Chronicles, and Jonah into English. He has now completed eighty percent of the Bible into English. Even in that old English that William Tyndall translated, some of our most treasured verses or almost exactly as William Tyndall first recorded them in English. Verses like, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Or in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. But oh, my favorite, almost exactly in the old English, just like William Tyndall first wrote it down, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The King James Committee of 1611, when they set down to create an English Bible. They took Tyndall's 80% and made it theirs. I wonder sometimes if we ought to take King James off of this Bible and put Tyndall's Bible on it. He's the one that did the work. His credit. Could I mention tonight his cross? William Tyndall was exiled from England, began to live as a recluse, fear of his life to be arrested, began to hear of people in England and their cost that they were paying for his English Bible. The ship's captain that he had dealt with so many times to smuggle Bibles Bibles were found aboard his ship. He was arrested and burned at the stake. One was caught reading the Bible, an English Bible. He was whipped. Rope was tied around his neck. And they pulled it so tight that it blowed the eyeballs out of their socket. One cried out in a Catholic mass while the preacher, priest was doing it in Latin. He cried out, we need an English Bible. He 
was arrested. He was put on the rack until all of his bones were out of joint. And then he was burned at the stake. William Tyndall heard of another that was found with just one page out of the English Bible. It had the Lord's Prayer on it. They were arrested, burned at the stake. I tell you tonight, our relationship with this old book is our picture of our relationship with the offering plate. Remember what the old songwriter said. There's a well of pure water when I'm thirsty and dry. Bread when I'm hungry and worn. The battle is raging. He's my faithful sword. A shelter from life's troubled storm. It's a light to my pathway and a lamp to my feet. When the world gets so dark you can't see, I've not made a change in one word that it says, but it sure made a change in me. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand, it's transformed beginning to end. Solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it. Now it keeps me from sin. When I think what it caused to hold in my hand, it reminds me that I owe a great debt to all of the martyrs. We've gone to the stake and quoted it with their dying breath. Well, its critics are many, its believers are few. But there's one thing I found to be true. If you find when you read it there's something wrong, then there's something wrong with you. This blessed old book that I hold in my hand, it's true from beginning to end. It's a solid foundation where I firmly stand. Sin kept me from it. Now it keeps me from sin. And I mentioned last of all tonight William Tyndall's conclusion. May the 21st, 1535, while in exile, he was befriended by a man by the name of Henry Phillips. Henry Phillips told him he wanted to know more about this English Bible that he was connected to. Henry Phillips got him to go out to eat with him. It was a trick. William Tyndall was arrested. Spent 18 months in a castle prison. And he was sentenced to be burned at the stake. On October 6, 1556, at the age of 42, a guard tied him to the stake. He asked him if he had any last words. The guard was still up on the ladder, finishing tying him to the stake. He said, oh, William Tyndall stretched his head back and cried out, oh, God, open the king's eyes to the need of an English Bible. He said the guard reached over and strangled William Tyndall to death, went back down the ladder, before the guard's feet hit the pavement and hit the light and started the fire, William Tyndall was walking the streets of gold. His ashes were thrown in the garbage dump. But I am confident of this. His ashes have sprung up a book that no man can quiet. What is your relationship with this book tonight? That little verse in Psalms 119, I will not forget thy word. I hate to do this tonight, to close this day on a very deep, deep, deep 
theological, intellectual truth, but I must. God told me to end it on this deep, deep, intellectual truth tonight, but here it is. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. That's the sermon, preacher.